Welcome to Hard Cam Wrestling Podcast, where falls count anywhere. There are no disqualifications and a two-hour time limit. Introducing the participants. The opinionated one, Ryan Sangster. The 18-year-old piece of gold, Joseph Parr. The real deal, the anti-miz, Ryan Palmer. And the real franchise, James Richards. Welcome, a wrestling podcast with a special podcast. Uh, conversations with me and a newbie, me being Ryan Palmer. Uh, you can find me at Yardy316 uh, 316, uh, on Twitter. Uh, follow the podcast on Hard, con, hard Cam Podcast. Uh, that's at your Hard Cam Podcast on Twitter. And follow us on Podbeam. Uh, sub- subscribe on Podbeam. Follow us on YouTube and subscribe on YouTube. And hit the notification bell. It's a special, uh, um, or a test even, uh, um, conversations with a noob, which is the working title, I guess. Uh, with me, Ryan Palmer, and Jill, my friend. Say hello, Jill. Hello. Jill um, Jill and I have been friends, in the Dwight comments, <laughs> for a while. Um, she is a new wrestling fan. Uh, how long have you been a wrestling fan for, Jill? Oh, in terms of the new wrestling, like not very long, just a, about four months. But, um, so, yeah not long at all but i liked um, it as a kid so kind right. of so uh when you say as a kid what did you watch as a kid well i'm old so i used to watch the old school british wrestling when i was a kid um world of sports stuff on a saturday afternoon and had forgotten about it to be honest until you started talking about wrestling again and we started talking about it and started watching it again what have we been watching who what uh, promotion is your promotion of choice currently? Well, you wanted me to watch something on AEW, but it was specifically because I asked you a question about something and you thought you could explain it to me by me watching AEW. So I went on to watch it in a kind of what I thought was just a technical asking questions, just like, oh, this seems quite interesting. I'm you know I'd like to know what this is about I don't understand or something you tried to tell me that I didn't understand and you said oh have a have a look at this and in all honesty didn't think that I would watch it for any other reason than to understand the technical point that you'd explained except I got really into it and really enjoyed it and actually watched the whole two hours and thought oh actually I quite like this. So it's primarily AEW that you you've been watching AEW that you're you're currently a fan of would that be correct yeah it is at the moment definitely because that's kind of the first thing that I started with and so then that made me more interested and I wanted to watch more of that but obviously you've you know explained us some other stuff and shown me some other things and sent me some stuff like New Japan which I've really enjoyed as well so I wouldn't say it's only that but I'm still so new to it that I, I don't know enough of the other stuff to really to know yet that's cool so what we're going to do is um, it's basically a Q&A session. Um, there are no wrong answers. There are just, there are no wrong questions, I should say. There are just questions from someone that has been newly immersed in wrestling. And I will do my best to answer all the questions Um don't feel intimidated. Don't feel uh, that you're being denigrated in any way. Don't feel that there are any wrong or stupid questions. There are only questions. There are only questions. You always be reassured with your questions, no matter how, um, no matter how newbie-ish the questions may seem the questions will always be answered or to the best of the ability that they'll be answered. Um, just a quick background. You and I are the same sort of age-ish. Uh, we are 
for you. <laughs> um, yeah. And we both live in the northeast of England in Newcastle upon Tyne, and uh, both have children. Um, we are. I don't know what. What else could you say about the, the two of us? Just as a background. Well, it turns. Well, it, oh well. It turns out we both like wrestling, so that's that's news to me. So um, <laughs> I don't think we need to say any more than that. But but yes, I'm glad that you said that you that you don't mind what questions I ask because obviously we talked about whether we should you know whether I wanted to do this podcast with you and it's not the kind of thing that I would normally do but I'm really grateful that you said it doesn't matter what I ask because that's what it's felt like the last few weeks when I've started to get into this and thought hang on yeah this is odd I didn't expect this to happen I didn't understand you know I, I when I watched it I really genuinely thought I was watching some interesting things about wrestling and didn't think that I would like it as much as I, I do but it does mean that I will I will as you know constantly ask what I feel like or really stupid questions so thanks for letting me know that I don't have to worry about that that's good oh don't worry oh, don't worry oh, there will not be any stupid questions don't feel that there are stupid questions um don't be as it, again just don't be intimidated um what is what's your first question that you, you'd like to ask? Um, I think it's really interesting when I watch it, and I don't. Or it's not so much actually when I watch it; it's when I listen to people, um, like on your podcast, and listen to other things where people are much more knowledgeable than me. And there's so much terminology that I don't understand. So, um, like, could you explain more to me about like heels and? baby face and and this and the things that are pertinent to the characters that explain explain the different character types and things that um sometimes i'm watching and i'm i don't always understand that heel is a a bad guy a yeah bad guy basically um someone who does not follow the rules someone that will break the rules um someone that you will intrinsically not warm to someone that you'll boo uh, someone you will not cheer yay someone that you will hate uh, um and you asked about faces as well did you say Maybe. yeah just the different and not just even heels and <clears throat> and faces but are there other terms like that that describe certain character types that someone new to it just wouldn't know you have a face which is derived from baby face. Obviously, someone that has a baby face, you you will immediately warm to because of the fact that they look like a, a very young person, like a baby. Um, that, that you will you will warm to, that you'll sympathise with, you'll get behind, that you, you will cheer. They are the eternal underdog. Um, in UK parlance. They would be called the blue eyes. Um, I'm not sure what the why, the, why blue eyes. I'm not even sure. Uh, I think because they basically would have blue eyes, they'd maybe just be given blue eyes, it, like an innocence thing, like a kind of yes, there would be a blue eyed boy. So, mm -hmm. that oh, would yeah, be yeah, yeah, of course, why yeah. there'd be a blue eyes. Um, other terms are. This one I don't even think really exists, and I really hate using it. Um, is a tweener. A tweener is someone that is based in between a heel and a face. Um, they're Does that mean that they sometimes play play different characters, or that they play a character and then change in in the middle to confuse the? the yes. Story? They would be, they're not necessarily a bad guy. They're not necessarily a good guy. Um, they're a, a tweener. For example, a lot of people would, we'll probably discuss this further down the line, uh, a character called Stone Cold Steve Austin, um, who would be a person that would drink beer and swear and throw two fingers or one finger salutes to authority. Um, but he would uh, attack. He would attack anyone that's a face 
or anyone that's a heel. Um, and he would not trust anyone. He would have a motto. He would live by the motto, DTA, don't trust anyone. He would be classed as a, as a tweener. Um, so anyone would be, anyone that kind of doesn't side with a heel and equally does not side with a baby face would be classed as a tweener. Um, so that would be um, one of the well-known uh, terminologies. Are there ever have... scenarios where somebody's like a really classic one or the other, and that's what they're really, really known for, but then later somehow they, they become a, like a different type of character? Does that ever happen? There are times where a heel would become a face, so a bad guy would become a good guy and a face would become a heel. So a good guy would become a bad guy and that's what's called a turn, mm. either a, a, a heel turn or a face turn. Um, All right. There's a character called The Big... Well, there's a wrestler, I should say, called The Big Show who's, who's notoriously known for having loads of turns. He would turn heel and face. Um, sometimes he would, in one show, he would be a face, turn heel, and then by the end of the show, he'd turn back. In the uh, same show? Uh, face. In the same show. <laughs> wow. I swear to God, I've seen one show where, where it was actually the other way around. He was a face, and then... Oh no, he was a heel and then turned face and turned heel by the end of the show. So, um, that's crazy. It's very crazy and it's very annoying. He's well known for his heel and face turns. Um, an old school wrestler, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, was known for being a, a, an eternal face. He's never been, not that to my knowledge, he's never been a, a heel. He's always been a, a face. Um, Ray Mysterio Jr. has always been a face, apart what? from his like WW, uh, WCW phase, where he was a part of the uh, dirty, dirty, uh, filthy animals. But some of the things that I've noticed is that when I watch it, it really depends on who it is and what the match is and whether it and whether it comes off well or not, and. For me, a big thing of it is is um, how much it looks really authentic, you know, how much you really buy into it and you're like, oh, my God, that's amazing. I've, you know, I'm really enjoying that. If people are turning and they're doing it in the middle of, like, the same show, like, does that really depend on how well they pull that off? Because surely that must be quite confusing to an audience if they're one minute, they're one thing, then they're something else. It doesn't happen all the time. It's just like uh, it'll only happen every so often especially with the the big show turn with it what, like three times in one show that doesn't happen all the time to my knowledge it's only happened maybe once right but okay. there, there, there may be like pay-per-views where he's being presented as a face and then turned heel um by the end of that pay-per-view and then uh being a, a heel throughout the rest of his run or throughout the, the rest of the that storyline's run, um, the 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 rest of the time, the audience are, are kind of trained to um, the audience are, are trained to, to to know what the difference between a, a heel and a face with and a spot a heel and the face turn on a TV show or on a, a, a pay-per-view, if that makes any sense. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it does. It does. But that's what I mean about how difficult it is to ask questions when you're new to it because that's all funny. of it's new to it and there's lots yes. of terminology and lots of things to absorb at the same time. And to be honest, at now it's still that part at the minute where I watch it and I just really enjoy watching the wrestling and a lot of the rest of it is still 
confusing you know um, like the storylines and the some of the characters I'm only just starting to get to know who the characters are and some of the storylines and the and the backstories around things that are going on I still don't really know and fully understand so it's quite it's quite interesting in that sense but for me it's still very much about did I like with no preconceived ideas this match that I just saw with my eyes and that's the that's the limit of my knowledge so it's I, I do feel that like I am asking probably some pretty obvious stuff so I apologize for that don't apologize oh there, there are no obvious questions or there are no silly questions or just questions that need to be answered if that makes any sense so don't don't feel embarrassed at all they were all just just questions well one of the questions that i did have as well was a little bit about like young people who are just coming into it you know so like top flight who are sort of relatively new i think or they seem relatively new from what i'm watching who is it seems to me are just really just start starting out and it it almost looks like that's obvious to me and I, as a as someone who knows nothing but it does look like they're new and they're still you know getting they're, they're making some really impressive moves and things like that but it doesn't look when I watch some of the more seasoned ones later in the show you can really tell the difference and I just wondered how people like feel about that do, do sometimes they get championed because of that because you know they're new to it and they're the new faces top flight are a very new tag team they're so new that they could be um i could be their dad you could be their mum <laughs> they're, they're that young they're in, their, they're, th- <laughs> 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 they're in their early 20s they're like 21 22 or something ridiculous like that um they ha- um they had a, a an introductory vignette v- um video package that where they said they used to watch um they used to watch the the, the young bucks or and um like people like the uh like Kazarian and uh christopher daniels these are these are guys that we'll touch upon later on in the in the series um back in like the early 2000s and stuff but they're like fucking um they're really young say they're the early 20s yeah. 21 22 something like that um they are so young that no one really knows that much about them um aew of sign them to contracts developmental contracts they're already in the mix with the young bucks the young bucks are seasoned veterans but they themselves are pretty young um they've hit their peak they're still in their peak the young bucks um the young bucks have a lot to you can teach see the- a lot of people yeah, and you can it, when you watch young books, you can definitely see see similarities. Or to me, you can see similarities between between them and and Top Flight. Um, having said that, I still even with young books, it's kind of really really um, difficult to watch sometimes because I can see why technically they're so much better than Top Flight, or they seem to be so much better. But sometimes it's um, it's interesting how much the way that it's the way that it's performed affects how much you enjoy it or don't enjoy it, even if the technical elements seem to be really good. And I, I must confess, sometimes with young young books, I don't find that that great either. Or not not as a new person watching it, it's um, it can feel a, a little bit contrived sometimes. It's not an uncommon opinion or a, a, an uncommon uncommon uh i guess a, opinion that a lot of the young bucks work feels contrived or there's not a lot of emotional connection with them um a lot of for me i don't mind them i i i don't find them offensive at all there is like a lot of but, critics to them that feel that all their, their work is is spots and they are spot monkeys 
Uh, what does been... what does what does spot monkey mean? Because what it what it sounds like to me, or what I would guess, was that it means that they do some really amazing sort of like set pieces type thing that are really technically brilliant and and synchronized things that are, don't get me wrong, the synchronized stuff you can't deny it. You know, you can't like not watch it and think, "Wow, that was amazing." They do some amazing things. I, it, for me, it's more I can't get an emotional response out of it for myself. I can't. I can't. I watch Pack, for example, um, and it's not just because he's from the northeast. I didn't know that when I first watched Pack, as you know. But I watch Pack, for example, and I can get quite an emotional response out of myself watching it. But sometimes with young books, I just, I, I'm just not feeling that. I think with the young bucks the criticism as i say the, the criticism with them is that oh they're the fucking spot monkeys or spots are where um you would have a match full of as you say choreographed moves mm-hmm. where they would do a lot of flips they would do like Moon salts, uh, which is a, a, a move where you, you flip backwards off the top rope um, onto down the opponent, opponent um, or there would be moves where there's a lot of flips, basically, um, but not a lot of selling. Selling being where you, for example, if you hit someone full in the face in a wrestling match, you would expect him to go to the ground and go, ah, oh, shit, I've been hit in the face. Yeah. Or I've been hit in the leg. Oh. Sometimes in a match, someone would just be hit in the face and two seconds later, they're, they're back up and like nothing happened. Um, a lot of people think that that's what they do. They get hit. Uh, they don't sell the move that they've been hit with. And then they go on to the next series of moves. So I think, I think that's yeah that explains it to be honest and I think we vaguely talked about that obviously at, outside of this podcast but we've talked about that a little bit before because there were things that I watched that I did sometimes think oh wow that didn't seem well like you say it didn't seem like the person sold it very well you know and it was like well that didn't you know I didn't really feel that I didn't so therefore I didn't have an emotional response to it um so yeah, I can completely understand that. I think why people might say that with them. Certainly, it's what I feel. It's 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 fine. It's I can see that it's technical. I can see it's really good, but it's sometimes just not. I mean, the, the thing is, they do actually do that. One of, if not both of the brothers, will sell the moves. They'd be like, um, I can't remember which match it was. Um, Matt or Nick had gone down with a bad back, really. He was selling the back really bad, or it would it was his leg. Uh, and Nick, or it'd be one or the other having to carry the rest of the match because of the other brother um, being so badly injured, um, selling his injuries, creating a an emotional connection with the crowd a connection with the match um the making sure that the opponents have worked down that like that uh bodily part whether they but work down the the leg or the back of either matt or nick and they've had to sit out the rest of the match or a, a portion of the match Whereas the other brother has had to fucking take the load of the match um, to uh, try to win the match or try to get his brother sufficiently recovered so that they can both win the match to produce an emotional response. So they can't do it and they have done it. It's just like a lot of people or a lot of critics or one particular critic, Jim Cornette, um, um, criticizes them for not being able to sell. So to be able to sell within a match is to to generate a an emotional response. Well, from I think the that's viewer. what it, I think that's what it is. But then I think at the end of the day, that's like in anything else, that's going to be subjective. So you're going to get some people who are going to absolutely feel that, you know, and other people who will look at it and go, actually, I can't explain this. In one way, being really new to it. 
is an interesting thing from that point of view because I'm not yet coloured by other people's opinions, if that makes sense. Like at the minute, I literally uh, just ask you really, really yes. what feels like stupid questions and you know outside of this conversation that's a little bit more public how many times I'm so embarrassed because I know I'm asking you something like so basic and I'm like well what about that though or what about this though and in a way what's interesting is it I, I do also know that part of it is that I, I've got no no one else's opinions and in well, a way that's a good thing because good. I watch it with just green very green eyes if you know what I mean I, I'm what I watch it and I'm just like I either like it or I don't like it, if that makes sense. And sometimes there's something quite nice about that because I, I really genuinely don't know. And then when you explain it, it makes sense. And I'm like, all right, OK. And I can see why the other people think the thing that they do. But there, there is something nice, actually, to be honest as well, about just laughing about our age before. Um, I do say 40 is the new 20, but never mind. Uh, but, but I do laugh about that in a way because I think that's something that, that comes as well from being a little bit older because I'm watching this with no expectations. I didn't think I was going to suddenly start getting into wrestling at this age. I was like, well, you know, like when we first started talking about it, I was kind of like, all oh, right, yeah, that's nice, you know. And then it wasn't, and when I wanted to know more, it was just purely from a technical point of view that it was like, all right, that sounds interesting, but I, I just don't know what you mean. So I need to watch it a little bit to see. And yeah, it was a big surprise to watch it and think, actually, I enjoy this. And then having memories back to things that I did watch when I was younger and things and thought, all right, OK. Um, but it's nice in a way to be coming to it with that without without the worry other than feeling like an, a newbie I don't have the other worry though because I have no idea what's the right or wrong thing to say if you know what I mean um it's quite nice and the irony is that green is a wrestling term a green no. horn <laughs> yes yes what does it is. that mean oh no a, it just it it basically one? means someone that is 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 green as you, you said like what I just um, said about myself is innocent is <laughs> Very Aww. new is a is a is a, a young boy, um, which is, again that's another friggin' <laughs> wrestling term. <laughs> well, <laughs> is, is, mm -hmm. uh, not sure I can quite uh, pull that one off. But, um, <laughs> oh, and that came out the wrong way. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to edit that uh, one out. <laughs> there's only one person you can pull off. Um, <laughs> right. I can't actually believe that came out of my mouth. Anyway. A green... Oh, really? That, that didn't come out of your mouth. <laughs> Stop, let just... me dig the hole. Ryan C, don't <laughs> let me dig, dig the, the hole. Dig the hole, huh? Flip it out. God, straight. <laughs> <clears throat> so, if we bring so, this so back to the point... Bringing it back. It's something bring about... I'm describing myself as being a very, very new person to the wrestling, yes. therefore having green opinions, which apparently is already a wrestling term. Well, being green is a wrestling term, yeah. 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 If you're like a trainee, you're green. Goodness If me. you're very new to wrestling business, you're green. So um, that's, that, that's basically what it means. Um, so... Any opinions that you have in that respect, it's fine. It's what this what this um, podcast is about. Um, no, to be fair, you know that like I was a little bit reticent about doing this in the sense that it's not the type of thing you know I would normally do. But it is interesting though that I think sometimes there are things that you know, like I said to you, you know, when we first started talking about your interest in wrestling, I was a bit like, all right, whatever didn't really think that much about it and then sort of found that I've, I've found some really genuine and interesting things in it that I really love and enjoy and it is interesting to think about how many things all of us probably do in life that we don't we would never look into or never think about unless another person mentioned it to you and then you think all right well okay I'll give that maybe give it a go even if you didn't think that was what you were doing but actually um I don't know I think there's a lot to be said for just to eat whatever age you are if some you know if someone Absolutely. else gets some enjoyment out of something have a little look see what you think you don't you know you do you if you watch it and you don't like it did the world end but I think it's nice to have that in a way to be able to just go yeah I actually I have found something new at my age I have found something new that I didn't think would be a thing that I would enjoy and there's a lot to be said for that do you think you will stick with it or do you think it'll just be like a, 
a phase that you'll not bother with and then you'll think, oh my God, I can't believe I was a fan of that shit. No, I don't think it'll be a thing when I think I don't believe that I w- I'm a fan of that shit, as you put it. I, I think I know that because, again, a bit of an age thing. I know that because there have been plenty of things over the years that I've had friends um, or partners who, who were into that I just wasn't. And it didn't matter how many times I tried to. I, I just was like, yeah, I'm not into this. This isn't my thing. I think that I'm intrigued and interested enough that I would always. So, for example, I think I would always at the at the very, very least, I think if it came on, I would want to watch it. Whether I put it on record it and want to watch it every week and become obsessively interested in it to the extent some other people are. Maybe the jury's out on that one a little bit. But do I enjoy watching it? Have I remembered what it was like when I watched the old British old school stuff when I was a kid and how much I really did enjoy watching all of that? And would I want to keep doing it in that sense? Do I think that there's enough that I like that I would want to? Or indeed just talking to somebody else who likes it and I'm intrigued enough to want to know more about it? Yeah, I think so. It's 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 become something very enjoyable uh, at the weekends and things. Um that you know, I can just sort of sit and watch and 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 think about and then and then hence that generates all the questions you know that I, I'm endlessly asking you so yeah no I think it's it's a very interesting thing to come to it at this point and and not have thought about it before or or even been maybe a little bit sniffy maybe before I started watching it um being honest so what have you watched how have you watched it and what do you think about what you've watched not going into any specific matches because we'll go into that shortly afterwards well like I said I started weirdly with the AEW stuff but that was specifically because of a conversation that we had that was about a match and I wanted to understand something technical and and ended up watching that there was also a brief brief watch of some WWE stuff which I must confess I, I, I genuinely didn't really enjoy and again, that was just because I was flicking through channels on the TV and I knew, you know, you told me a lot of stuff about WWE. So I thought, oh, oh, that's that thing and watched a little bit of it, but just was like, nah, didn't, wasn't into it, didn't do anything for me. I was just like, all right, that's interesting. It was the AEW stuff when it was about something you told me about. And then I got watching it because I wanted to see this technical move. And then once I'd watched it, I got into it. Then you told me about New Japan, and I think really the New Japan stuff, I think I told you this at the time, was the stuff that I really, really enjoyed the most. But you did explain that you'd kind of sent me the stuff that was the best of the New Japan. Yeah. Um, Specifically, which part, what New Japan stuff did I send you, and what did you like about it? Okay, you might be the better one to tell me what you sent me, because you (laughs) sent me it. Oh, yeah. Uh, there was a lot, actually. Um, I, th- I think the, the, the memorable well, the, stuff the, that I sent it was the AJ Styles uh, versus New uh, versus uh, Nakamura. Yeah, Wrestle and, and Kingdom I, Twelve, I think it was. Yeah, and I think I said to you at the time that one of the things that I found re- well, yes, well, there was two really interesting things about watching that. One was that the styling of it was very much my cup of tea. It was kind of um it felt it was still very showy and razzmatazz but in a very different way to anything i saw not that i've watched loads of wwe but i've seen a little bits of it enough and even aew it just felt very different it was darker it felt a little bit heavier it had a it definitely was ticking more boxes for me in that sense um and the match itself was amazing and and felt like knife edge. I mean, like loads of suspense towards the end and loads of like really, really authentic stuff that you were literally, you know, on the edge of your seat. I mean, I remember just several, several times. I think I was texting you. I might have even texted you going, oh, my <clears> God, <throat> you know, like what if this happens? Like kind of, you know, yeah, just yeah, it just blew my in all honesty, that one blew my mind. And I know you said that you deliberately sent me what you thought was the one that I would like the most, but I, but I did. I mean, I watched that and just was like, wow, that was amazing. That w- that was hanging off the edge of your seat, full of suspense, 
didn't have a clue what was going to happen right up till the end. Crazy result by the end. I mean, it was, it, I suppose by the end, you could have looked back and saw the result, but you didn't know all the way till the end. Um, yeah, I mean, that one, that was probably, in all honesty, that, I mean, I've really enjoyed loads of stuff on AEW, but um, that particular one that I watched, I remember just thinking, yeah. When you were saying just before, actually, like, do you think you'd be a fan or not be a fan? Or actually thinking about thinking back to that particular match? Yeah, probably. <laughs> Ones like that, yes, 100%. That's, that was amazing. I was just, like, hanging off the edge of my seat. Just thought it was great. And and just certain moves as well. There was a point I remember um, where the guy had the guy by the neck at the post in the corner and, and just, yeah, just being completely enthralled and and just very very excited by what they were doing and, and and how it would go and how it would end and and whether or not that move would even come off okay you know um so yeah that maybe in all honesty maybe that was the one when I just thought yeah actually I do actually really like this so what apart from New Japan what else have you watched what house have I turned you on to? Um, and in what way, if you have liked that, what you have been turned on to? Well, I think it's mainly like watching AEW each week and stuff. It's like quite interesting to watch what, you know, think about what you like and what you don't like. And like I was saying before about not necessarily knowing what the right thing to say is, isn't a bad thing because it means I just look at it with comfort completely you know no preconceived ideas of what is okay or not okay or who might think you're an idiot if you think this thing I just watch it and think well I either liked that or I didn't um so there was like I'm just weirdly like got a couple of notes that I'd written it laughingly looking back now when I was first watching it and thinking oh I, 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 because I wanted to ask you questions because I just didn't understand so much of the stuff that was going on um, but there's like a couple of notes when I'm like things that I didn't like, um, and but also things that I really did. So there's sort of um, the Orange Cassidy and and Kit match, which was quite one of the earlier ones that I watched. That for some reason I've written, and all I can tell you is I've just written that I really liked it. But I do have a vague recollection of watching it, but it's like quite a few weeks ago now. But I genuinely, genuinely enjoyed that. It was kind of. I hadn't really enjoyed the one before because it was a little bit um, a, li a little bit contrived and things I didn't really understand. But I was watching this one thinking, oh, God, I really enjoyed that. And it's quite funny looking back now on like some earlier things that where I'm just just jotting down some things I want to ask you about. And I'm looking at them now and just thinking, oh, bless, <laughs> like, you know. It, it was so interesting to watch it. It still is because I'm still so new to it. And there's so much stuff I don't understand. But. And there's a point where Pac makes an appearance, and I'll get very excited by that. Um, so any particular, um, any matches or, like, from the very first match or very first show that I advise you to watch from, from that show, was there anything in particular that you wanted to, to ask about or was there anything that has... Uh, piqued your interest at all in any sort I think it was of way. Well, yeah, well, there was. I mean, there were, there were a couple of things on that one. I mean, just, you know, thinking back to it, particularly, for example, Cody Rhodes at the end, which, and this is what I mean about asking really, really what you feel are really daft questions. These so aren't Cody... daft questions. If they're not daft questions, so you just answer, you just ask away. Cody Rhodes is on at the end. And obviously yes. it's the whole, and what you, you know, by this point I've picked up, there's the family dynasty, there's the stuff, yes. you know, and whatever. And yet I watched that cold in the sense of it made me cold. It didn't do right. anything for me whatsoever. And I was confused by that because I'm like, why am I watching what feels like the star billing, if you know what I mean? Like it's a guy who's on at the end. He's the, you know, it's, it's the big draw. It's the thing. Why do I not get this? Like, why am I not understanding that? And that particular one, and I think this is at least one of the very first ones that I watched. If It might not be the first one, but it's definitely one of the first ones. And I remember watching him at the end and just being, I don't get this. There'd been, And that's what I meant, actually, about earlier on. There'd been matches earlier on 
that I was just completely enthralled by, really got into, thought were amazing and just thought, God, I could really get into this, you know. And then I watched what to me feels like it's meant to be the top villain. And I've at least picked up enough of the storyline about the family dynasty. But yet I but yet I didn't like that. And it's right. I suppose I get confused <clears throat> by that. Like, why do I like ones that you would all say are really, really brilliant? But yet other ones that maybe you might say aren't really that great, somehow I still like. Which one was this? What happened in this episode? Just so I can get my head around it. Was this um was this a was was Jade Cargill involved in this one? Or was this one where uh some someone called the Exalted One came in and decimated Cody or mm, very good question. Can't right. remember. What but this happened? bear in mind this remember? is like one of the first things that I watched. So mm. it was just all all I've got in my memory bank from this at the at the time is it's one of the first ones that I've watched. One of the first AEWs that I've watched start to finish two hours. And then, it, you know, I'm, at that point, I'm just getting my head around the fact that there even is a billing, that there's a thing that there's. And I remember asking you, you know, afterwards, like, oh, how did that go in sense of does it work like that? Does it go from one? Like, is it like any other um, any other form of, of sports or entertainment where you're watching the people, the best are at the end, basically, you know, that's the last thing you watch. Yeah. It's supposed to be yeah. the best one. And I didn't even know that at that point. It was that level of not even knowing that. And then what I couldn't understand was I picked up enough to think, oh, I think that is what that is. But why do I not like that? Like, why am I not having the response to that that I think I'm supposed to have? Um, and I couldn't really I couldn't really put my finger on it. But I think that's why I'm still very intrigued by watching it, because there's so many that I feel like that about. It's, it's kind of listening to other people explain more stuff to me helps me to understand you know what is good and what what's bad and partly that's what is genuinely good and bad in terms of the things that people who are experts on it understand all of the things they're saying and then what it's like when you are completely new to it and all you see is what is in front of your face and you've got no idea other than did I like it or did I not like it so I think it's more like more like that I don't know it was it was one of the first ones so I can't tell you who the match was against or what was going on I just remember knowing that Cody Rhodes and the dynasty of, you know, the Rhodes dynasty and all of that thing was a thing and wondering why, for some reason, in that particular, you know, match, I didn't didn't feel that. So I think it's all about um, a certain level of gatekeeping. Um, if you don't know, then you don't know. But if you do know, you do know kind of stuff. Um if you don't know, some people that will know will let you know. Um, Cody, I think in the the instance that you're speaking about, would have been actually I don't even know. It could have been that um, that it may have just been just before the Jade Cargill shack kind of stuff so i'm not even too sure um uh, but in terms of cody himself the background to cody would be that he and his brother are, in, are now in uh aew his brother being uh dustin Rhodes. um if you've watched any you, you probably have seen some of the shows uh, he has a half painted face. Um, he's had a match with Dustin Rhodes yeah. in AEW, which turned out to be a complete bloodbath of storytelling. Uh, Cody used um, his father, Dusty Rhodes, um, storytelling techniques in that match and some verbiage in that match. They both were in WWE. They both were kind of misused um, in WWE. His dad, or their dad, were also was also used in the, the wrong way in WWE as well. So there's a, a lot of lineage and a lot of material uh, focusing on Dustin Rhodes and, and Cody I th- I Rhodes. Think, well, and also there's been a lot more of that in AEW recently. 
you know, like, so I'm saying, like, this is going back to one of the first things that I ever watched when I'm like, just, oh, what is even this? I don't understand. But watching <clears throat> some of the stuff recently, that's become more obvious and I've understood more about that. Um, and actually, some of the stuff, like, with the dad and things has been actually quite interesting. But it, it was just specifically about that very first one that, I, that all I got was that I knew I was supposed to like the one at the end. And I couldn't understand why I didn't. And then, but as as things build, but I think that might be more about how I need to know more about the storylines and more about the back, you know, the backstory and what the point of some of the feuds is and different things. And like, do you remember um, we had a conversation about when Sting appeared? Yes. And I was like, I, I mean, I, I got it. I was like, I think I understand what's going on here, but I obviously had to like speak to you and go like, is that, have I understood that the right way? That's what's, that's what's happened. And I think that's just where I am at the minute. It's so new. It's kind of, surprising because I didn't think it was something that I would necessarily like then I find that actually I do really like it but there's so much terminology and so much backstories and things that yet are still you know still for me to understand fully that all I can do at the minute is watch each match and worry about did I like it did I not and and all I meant in a way what we're saying before is there's something quite nice about being in that that place I mean, I think going back to the Sting thing, the, st- the best analogy for a Sting appearance on AEW would have been, um, I'd say, Phil Mitchell was on. Phil Mitchell was a character on uh, on EastEnders, and the EastEnders had lost loads of ratings. And was about to like shut down as a TV production, but Emmerdale Farm was uh, a <laughs> was emerging as a bigger TV production, and was buying all the characters, signing all the characters from other soaps, and not changing their characters, or they were changing their characters or some shit. But they on Emmerdale were um, becoming the best fucking soap opera. Um, ever and out, sh- I sh- I've had the biggest um, uh, ratings. So they then they, and they kept trying to sign. Um, they kept trying to uh, trying to sign uh, Sting or Phil Mitchell. I can't even remember one of the Mitchells. It was I- I'm lost in my own analogy. Um, so they tried to. Sign- <laughs> they try to, they try to sign him and Phil It would be a great Phil, analogy if I watched soap operas. Oh on. fuck. Oh shit. <laughs> then the impact is gonna be lost. Well. Shit. So um somebody you fucking can edit listening. Again. You can edit that one out later. Someone listening will will know the analogy. Um so <laughs> they try to sign him, they try to sign him, and so they signed him eventually. Um, and when they appeared on Emmerdale, uh, Phil Mitchell was portrayed as a prick and a pussy, and uh, you never saw him again. But then uh, Brookside suddenly fucking started up again. Here's another fucking analogy. Brookside started again. And <laughs> we, everyone, oh my God. Right. Okay. Well, we are now got, showing our age, and my yes, God, we're going yes. back to the day. But yes. But everyone I did watch got behind Brookside. Brookside. Everyone got behind Brookside and everyone fucking loved Brookside and that took away ratings from uh, EastEnders and Emmerdale and um, suddenly fucking Phil Mitchell from (laughs) these two fucking shows appeared on Brookside (laughs) and everyone was overjoyed and marked out. I think Uh, that analogy fucking works. Um, So if that is the the scope of how that works? I think. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it. Oh, shit. Oh. This is. You can find me on uh, at YouTube. Uh, no, 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 not at YouTube. At uh, find this on YouTube at Hardcam Podcast. <laughs> Pardon me. <laughs> Good. Um, I don't think. <laughs> I hope someone is editing that. I can say. Jill doesn't have a. Uh, Jill doesn't have a vodka. Jill doesn't have a. Um, 
do you have a uh, plug your social medias, Jill? Fuck. Any any social <laughs> medias? I have social media, ah, right. but not. Uh, I have I social media, but but not social media that I can plug. Exactly. Right. Fair enough. Uh, <laughs> I'm at Yardy three sixteen. Uh, this has been the Hardcam Wrestling Podcast. <laughs> <laughs>